maybe once in a hundred times I give a talk that I think, well, you know, I just got everything right. Um, I was pretty close to that tonight, I think, but uh, I may be fooling myself. I mean, I think I had rapport with the audience. Uh, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I thank Dr. Uh, Sarbacher for uh, introducing uh, me at great length. I'm going to uh, pull the carpet from under him and uh, tell you who I really am, and uh, we'll actually start down on the farm. There was no electricity in this house or on that farm until I was 17 years of age. And so I've lived this sort of reality television uh, scene for 17 years. Effectively, <coughs> I saw the transition from the horse and cart age into the you know, tractor and automobile age. The one thing I learned about that 25 years on the farm uh, what was that you had to move with the times. You had to move with the technology. You couldn't stand and wait and hold things as they were. You had to be moving, and you also had to be innovative and creative. So <coughs> I was an only child, and <coughs> before I was let loose on the farm, or as I was let loose on the farm, at home I would be uh, solving jigsaw puzzles. For me, <coughs> this was an early training in stereochemistry and molecular recognition. Now, I did not come to chemistry the way many people did, through bangs and smells. I abhor, abhor bangs, and I, I, I blot out most smells. I, I came to chemistry uh, <coughs> through this kind of activity. If you're a chemist, then chemistry is really about art on the smallest of scales. In fact, on a scale below the nano scale, chemistry starts off being very much sub-nano. This is a science that takes on an artistic flavor to it. The one thing I don't want to leave you with today is that the miracles that are happening or about to happen in nanotechnology have happened overnight. They may have for some people. For me, it's been 40 years in the making. And it's a question of uh, judging your audience, you know, and, and having variety. So it's to try and reach to as many people as possible. And so I always think that, uh, you know, if you have a five-year-old and you have a 95-year-old, you should be trying to uh, engage both of these people. Right, so <coughs> there are many views of nanotechnology. <laughs> Let's see what one of the younger members of uh, our society has to say, Jessica Alba. <laughs> Last year, she was in style to be quoted as, it's dorky, but I like reading sciencedaily.com. Nanotechnology blows my mind. <laughs> Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and meet what I call the nano queen. <laughs> she is just over five feet tall, so. <laughs> At Buckingham Palace, they arrange a dais for her. You can see that uh, <coughs> there's somebody here. Um, and this is the Lord Chamberlain. You know, you've read some Shakespeare, no doubt. And he spouts out, may I present to your majesty Professor Sir Fraser Stoddy for services to chemistry and nanotology. <laughs> <laughs> so... <coughs> I, I was already pretty nervous, and, and you know, she's holding this very sharp knife, <laughs> not, not far from my neck, and I'm thinking, how do we deal with this? <laughs> well, whatever you might think of her, when we were face to face, he said, oh, he got that wrong, didn't he? And I said, he certainly did, Your Majesty. <laughs> what should it be then? Nanotechnology. She got it right. Wow, you've got it right, ma'am. <coughs> it's about very small things, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed, it's about tiny things that are 100,000 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair, ma'am. That's exceedingly small. <laughs> you work in America now, I'm told. That's so, ma'am. And she extended her hand, and that was my 15 seconds worth of... Uh, Contact, and I was on my way. Thank you. 